My final strategy tip then, I guess, would just be that is you don't, I'm not saying go in your optimizer and set rules to say, it's up to you how aggressive you want to get and just say max two 7K guys. Obviously, you know that's going to get you different. Most people will have at least three, if not four, in some cases, five. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by Underdog Fantasy, the Masters. DFS picks, Millie Maker preview, the ownership, injuries, weather, lineup construction, the strategy. We're going to talk it all through. Not just me, Toe Tag and Tambo, Tower Tambolini, shipitnation.com, in studio with me. We're going to win three Millie Makers in one week, yeah. so leave some money for the rest of us. I think it's the spot you can do it. I know people are talking about it on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it, about the, the golf stuff is where it can happen, though. You put it the $100 and the $10. Get that one lineup that just is the nuts. You've got it, and you can win them both if you're in the 22-22, the mega. A lot of people got tickets for that this week, so that should be exciting. And you forgot about the other thing, injuries you said, but baby mamas too. we got Scotty Scheffler and Sam Burns. Both got a bun in the oven with their wife, and I think it's one and three weeks out, and they both said they will leave the tournament regardless of their spot on the leaderboard if that happens. Do you think that impacts Scotty's ownership at all? I say no. I, I don't think so, but I also I think it'll be an interesting conversation when we get there. What do you think he's coming in at right now? Just a quick thought off the top. I haven't looked at it, so I'm just going in blind. Uh, I don't know, 33%? I still think he gets to 30. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Yep. So, so he, a, he's such an easy click, and the pricing is soft enough, and there's just like four names in the lower sevens that make it work so easy. Yeah, and I think people really like the sevens this week versus the eights. Right. I mean, I, I don't disagree with them. It's, it's, oh, neither do I. I'm just saying that's what <laughs> makes it so common and so easy. So we're going to have to talk about it when we get to roster construction. It'll be fun building out some lineups for this one. It's just one of those things where, you know, if you try and go double stud with Scotty, then it might get a little bit trickier. I feel like there's a little bit less of a, an opportunity. Because at the Masters, as you know, and many that watching the show, if they've been there in the past playing this, you can't just make the cut at the Masters. Like, you're going to need probably the winner, four others in the top 10, and, like, a dude that scores. That's just typically what we see. Yeah, I mean, that's almost, like, verbatim what I wrote up in my newsletter yeah. this week. Uh, so you can sub to the newsletter. It's completely free. I'll have another one coming out on Tuesday evening. I'm waiting for the tee times to come out to release, like, the full course breakdown. I already put out the field breakdown, and the picks have been updating. Like, if you just want to find all the content this week, hit the description. There's a link to the Mayo Masters Content Hub. It's just a drop page with every show, every article, every bit of information that I've put out so far, just quick links to all of that. So please help us out and go do that. And if you sub to the sub stack, you get in the draw for a thousand bucks. You throw that in the uh, Ship It Nation Discord that you can win a thousand bucks. There's four prizes of 250 bucks. I want four winners. Jeff and I will be giving out the winners live from Las Vegas Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to be on the deck of the stadium swim at the Circa. We're going to be putting in some bets live at the Circa. And we'll be doing our final show to wrap everything up, to get excited for the Masters. But the big thing that you can do to get 30 ballots in the draw right now, use code MAYO at underdogfantasy.com. You get the $100 deposit match. Boom. So you're up 100 bucks to begin with. You get a Scotty Scheffler free square for Pick'em on Thursday. But code MAYO will unlock a secondary free square with Jordan Spieth over under half a stroke. So you get two free squares for Thursday. So for two separate entries on things like that, when you get a free entry on something like underdog, because I know people will be like, because there's like a limit that you can put on it. You can't put like a thousand bucks on it or something like that. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but let's say it's like 25 bucks or 20 bucks or something. If you have these two free squares, you're putting those together with like four other things, right? To maximize the free square. It's yeah. Cause you're, you're limited on a bet. Like I think mine was $10. Max. Yeah. So it's like that. So you got to put five together. So try and just slam it and make it worth as much as possible versus i don't know some people if they're bankroll building like the cash games of doing that yeah. find the best play that you like to go with it i think the threes are better than the twos so find two of your favorite plays make it a three it's obviously less risk still take advantage get the extra boost from it and then boost your bankroll up if you're looking for it though like it's like free bets on a sports book i'm gonna go for the biggest thing i can get and try and maximize the outcome yeah 100 percent. so you can hit that down in the description code mayo at underdog fantasy the major season drafts i did one on a live stream last night uh, the adp is switching batia going pretty high in the major season draft now no way he loses this week either he's gonna get the green jacket too um, then I should probably bet on him, right? <laughs> I don't know. There's some good bets out there, though, I think. Some okay, of those numbers have drifted back, like, pretty big. Well, we'll talk about that, then, if, if there are certain guys that you're on, because I want to hear, because I only have three bets in so far, like, in terms of outright, and I, there's no number that really sticks out to me that I love at this moment that I really want to jump in on, so it might just be three. It, it's not going to be just three. I'm going to bet someone else, but mm -hmm. um, weather. 
This Thursday weather, it's not, it doesn't concern me. It concerns me as a viewer of the Masters. Right. That I want to see the Masters start on time. I want to see people play golf at Augusta National. And right now, it's just windstorms. Yeah, it looks and like we could just get a delay, right? It looks like it's raining all day at this point. And I know that this is the course that is best suited to dealing with rain, the sub-air system. I think it's under the entire course now. Just suck all the precipitation out of it, then they can dictate how soft or firm that it plays. But we saw the rain out last year Mm -hmm. on the Saturday. So I think it either gets delayed or I I don't think that they finish on Thursday, I guess, is what I want to say. Yep. Does that impact how you do any sort of lineups? Like, we don't know what the tee times are as of yet. Would that lean you more towards the guys that play later? In the day, like the PM wave, because they would get the softer conditions. Is uh, there full waves, though? I feel like it's yeah, there pretty is. tight because yeah. it's the, no, the 89 waves. guys or whatever. There's so full I don't, waves. Yeah, we'll see. I, I don't see anything right now. I don't care about the weather at the moment. Besides what you said as a viewer, it's going to push it back for us, and it sucks because we're so amped up. I've been mm-hmm. so excited for this talking about it. La- by the way, last week, got a good one. I know I, I came on here and ranted, and then finally, that's the difference. So everyone that you know sort of came, on, came on down on me about the two weeks before were like, I thought that was good golf. You said it, too. That was good golf last week. Denny versus Batia going into a playoff, the chase down on Sunday, even with the separation from the pack, that was still good golf. That, that was what I like to see. And cool. that finishing hole is so underrated. Oh, you like that one? I like that one. I, I just think it can be mayhem. Like, obviously, there's the creeks and the sides and all that. And if you go out, then you have to lay up or like Batia, like the shoulder thing, whatever. But I just, it, there's potential for drama on that hole. And I like they go back and go 18, 18, 17, 18. Could have went, went on. And I think that hole can solve a tournament. It doesn't remind me of people playing the same one over and over. Uh, what was it? The Canadian. Canadian. Well, I see. That's the first thing that popped into my mind was it was very reminiscent of that Canadian Open playoff. Just playing this par 5 18th where you kind of can go for it, but... People say that, though, I think because of the backstop, like Jordan Spieth on Saturday or whatever, where it's like because you technically could do that, but you got to get out in the fairway first. There's a lot on the line. In this case, it was a first-time win potential versus a second win but a shot at the Masters. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I loved it. I thought that was great golf, and I'm even more excited for this week. I, I almost had a heart attack. I believe it. The Yeah, the ticket. Yeah. yeah. Just the ticket and rooting for Batia anyway because I love Batia. Yeah. That's just people it. are making fun of him. I like this guy a lot. Who's, I know, make, who's making fun of him? Uh, people call him a nerd, skinny dweeb, whatever, and all this stuff, making fun of his shoulder thing because the one time he came out with his shirt off like out of the water just to rising yeah. from the thing, and now today he's like, uh, can I go over there and get somewhere out of private so I can get my shirt off? Like When you see that, you're like, buddy, just hit the shot. The dude just went in the water, and you're going to hit it anyway, but whatever it happened worked. He hit a great shot and closed the deal. He even made the birdie when he didn't have to. So so, so these guys calling Batia a nerd, are these the same people that are running spreadsheets in their basement and playing DFS? I don't know. Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe it's the cool dudes. Oh, the cool dudes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I like Batia. He's I like him quite a bit. He seems pretty fucking chill to me. Yeah. So. He's my guy. Good for him, too, by the way. Like, the sw- everything that he's done is opposite of what people... Super contrarian. And then goes and still gets it done. It's like, oh, you shouldn't go pro. Okay, two two wins now. Going to the Masters. It's like, oh, you, you know, you're putting this, that, and the other. Okay, I'll just switch to this putter because <laughs> everyone else makes fun of it. I'll just take it and use it and start winning again. You know, just crushes, man. Love to see it. It's awesome. So do you think that you will inherently do a PM, AM, AM, PM, like both sides wave stack, just not knowing how this Thursday weather is going to play itself out? Because there's a ton of wind the first two days, too, that... I'm going to do that solely to see if I can ca- catch a pocket of either avoiding the worst of it or getting myself into a pocket with the best of it. I think you're talking to the guy who invented it. You know I'm doing that. It's in, not a question. But I, I always do that anyway because I think there's just different things. And one of my favorite things that I always talk about, Master Show, maybe some new viewers this week popping in is one of the reasons is people confuse weather wave stacking with wave stacking. That, we- that weather word is missing for a reason. When you just wave stack, who cares? It's the point of it is, is that you can avoid some of the natural chalk. And as everyone's like, oh, how did they get onto that guy? Well, they didn't play the 20% chalk guy because he was in the other wave. A lot of other people would have just had that guy in their lineups and they have the five of six. You've got the six of six and then you see what happens over the weekend, just like everybody else. Yeah. To spell it out for people, just you don't know who's going to win. I don't know who's going to win. You don't know who is going to win this tournament. So... It can put you at a huge advantage. Look at last week. I think there, it ended up being like two strokes. The week before was 10 of the top 13 from a wave side. And it's like one of the things that you actually do have that. I don't uh, disagree with those saying like nobody's sleeping on this. People have caught on to it. But you and I sort of vet the players that one year. And our guy Sky Hoke, Skyler, he had it out there. He said, man, everyone knew about this player's wave advantage. Obviously, it went the other way. And I get all that. But the main takeaway from that was less than 7% stacked the perceived wave all in with six zeros, six guys in that wave, zero from the other. And flip side to the other, just knowing that it could flip, less than 1% 
full stacked the other side. So everyone living in this bubble is like, oh, everybody knows about it. People know about it for sure, but people aren't using it or taking advantage of it or trying to for that matter. And who knows, maybe the numbers don't bear out over time, but I've had much more success with that stuff. And then people hopping in the discord over at Chip and Nation say like, how'd you get on that guy? Or how did he end up in that lineup? Eh, here's the thing. It was a 6-0 lineup. Ah, that makes sense because so-and-so was in the other wave. Correct. Yeah, it just gets you on different people. My whole point being that if you don't know who's going to win, take some of the decision making out of your hands. Make the decision that I'm going to play the guys from this wave and then just X out the other ones. Like it's a natural fade and get you off certain guys. Because listen, if you're going to play one lineup, you probably don't do it. But if you're going to play 50 or 20 or whatever it might be, I'm going to allocate some of that to it. Yeah, that's the whole point with the portfolio aspect of the, the game that we play. I would say that's kind of the point. If you have 150 lineups, I got no problem if you want to go 25, 25, and then roll 100 straight up. It's however you want to do it, but you put your own spin and your own numbers on it, but that's just the way you can do it. Yeah, I usually play 60 because I, I put in all the, like I'll play in the $5. So I'll build 20 AM, 20 PM, 20 mix, and then like whatever we do on the show. Yep. And that's what I throw into the tournament. I've won four GPPs this year, so... Something's working out. It's, it's working out, and they've all been wave stacks, so... I'm probably just getting lucky, obviously, but I'm, at least I'm now putting myself in position to get lucky and capitalize on it, mm -hmm. which is kind of the entire game. Exactly. That's so, fantasynational.com, if you want to run through the stats, generate your lineups, look at the ownership, but there's also a brand new pick'em tool this week as well. So if you wanted to use underdog, you can just type in the player, type in the line and boom, it'll give you the probability of it being higher or lower than said number. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait to take advantage of that this week. You guys should too. Fantasynational.com slash Mayo to get yourself 20% off for the masters injury news. Bati is no longer questionable. Like he's going to play. We know he's going to play, but do you think people will be off of him because of this injury? No. I don't think so either. I don't know if it's like, I think he's still held in check. That range is quite loaded. So it's not like he's going to be 20% in my eyes. If he is, that would blow me away. But I would just say like, he's, let's say he's 12 to 15. I, I could see that. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm going to play him. Mm -hmm. Are you? Playing very good right now. Yeah, definitely going to have some of them. And just to tell you, well, the thing that will keep his ownership in check, I think, is he's surrounded by both Henley and Siwoo, who are going to be very popular. Yeah, one interesting note there, just on that topic, because we I thought we were going to bring it up later, but it's good to start now, is like uh, Siwoo and Batia, very similar. Henley's more like your, look at his results at the Masters even. He's just more, yeah, I know he hasn't been there a bunch of times recently, but his couple times recently and then before that, he was always like a, he'll get into the mix type of guy, but it hasn't really exploded. The one thing about Batia, which we talked about a lot last week and previous weeks plenty, is go look at his numbers. It's boom or bust, essentially, right? Like the way he plays, it's typically like a top 10 or he's not in the mix. That's tough to imagine for the Masters, but we see it every year. There's somebody that's up there doing it. And so I think he could be the guy off that where, where the, like you said, he'll get kept in check because people will say, well, he's not going to win the Masters. Now he doesn't, he's $7,200. We're not playing the win game. We're not betting him. Some people are, but we're saying we're not betting him in this spot. You, he could be your last guy into your lineup and you just want to get something out of the guy who's playing very good golf right now, coming off a win. Guess what? Sometimes that momentum makes it so that you just don't care. It's like you're good. And that turns into lights out and start making things and just starts going your way because he's got a weight out. He's got nothing like there's no weight on his back here. It's his first Masters. He can just play around and see what happens. Yeah. And he's he, really good. And he has the shot making ability to do this, especially mm -hmm. to make the cut. And he's a lefty. And, he, and he's a lefty, which, which is <laughs> like his around the green game is terrible. Yeah. So that could be a huge disadvantage for him here. Yes. But if he's playing the way that you need him to play, it was exactly what I wrote up in Golf Digest last week when I bet him to win and why he was my pick to win. It's like his around the green game sucks. But he's now at a course where if he can just lead in greens regulation, he doesn't need to chip. And he did lead in greens regulation because that's what he was trending towards with how good his driving and how good of his irons were. And that's what this course, like this course will demand you to get up and down somewhere. You're going to make bogeys at Augusta. But you kind of spelled it out. You need the winner. You probably need two guys inside the top five, another two inside the top 10, and someone to outscore their DraftKings position versus the leaderboard. So if they're T25 on the leaderboard, you need them to be something around T13 in terms of DraftKings scoring, like as an example. Yes. He is the perfect guy for that. He is. The around the green game thing definitely does worry me a little bit because it's totally different. <laughs> Chipping, like it's everything around there, just even the short game stuff in general and knowing some of the stuff and the backstops and all, it's really tough to learn on a quick turnaround. But like you said, he's got the, the ball striking right now. But that's why I gave the example of like him and Siwoo, both 
big time upside, both very similar. I'm not going to go officially set a rule against playing them together. I'm just thinking if you're building one to three lineups in your hand building, you might want to consider if you're going to get the double spike week from Batia and Siwoo Kim at the same time, or do you want to be selecting one of them of the two to try and fill out your roster and just hope that they're that guy that you mentioned that sort of fills in the back end. And I mean, even to speak of Henley, like he comes in riding great form right now. He's been top 15 at the Masters three of the past four years. So I get why I don't, I'm going to be playing Russell Henley. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do want to see how the ownership does shake out because are we entering a situation where everyone's going to gravitate towards the same guy? Because we see this happen. It's like, oh, well, everyone's going to play Henley and Batia and Kim and I don't know, let's just pretend. Fleetwood Connors are right there too. Yeah, and, yep. and Thigal is just above them as well. Like yep. We know that they're going to be popular, but does one guy end up, or one or two, suck up all this ownership? And it does leave the other ones on the fringes a little bit. Not to say like, Siwoo is going to drop down to the same ownership as Phil Mickelson or something like that. He's not going to be 2%. No. But instead of, there's a big difference between like 16% and like 7%, which is on the table when you get to these weird pockets. Yeah, I think uh, for sure up top, Thigala and Fleetwood, Fitzpatrick even outweighs them at 7,900. So I've got it like Fitzpatrick, Thigala, and Fleetwood. And then I think Connors is not far behind Fleetwood. I just think that's the way it shakes out. And then you go down from there to those guys you talked about are still going to be in that 10 to 15 range. You just don't know if it's going to be 10.5 or if it's going to be 15.5. Like it could be anywhere within there. I owe you 100 bucks. <laughs> and I won the, the head-to-head last week. And you won week. the head-to-head. Big week for you. I mean, I, I think that you manipulated uh, the DraftKings <laughs> ownership. That's not fair. It, we could we could void it. That's okay. No, but no, I, I don't, say, I, I'm going to pay you, but I just I know your sneaky tactics now. Tweet now. Hideki's hurt. Don't play Hideki. I still played ownership. him. I still played him, too. I told everybody that. It's, uh, people know it's in my Discord. Every, like I, always have, I don't go on that stuff because of that. We've seen it so many times. But I will say this. Did it at least shock you? I don't think Hideki's ownership led to the Rory almost 29 or whatever. I think Rory was still getting it regardless. I just think you're right. Hideki would have ended up being much closer to Rory and maybe slightly above. Sure. Yeah. It, but but what, I do, what, what it led to Ludwig. was Ludwig. Yeah. It all went to Ludwig. So everyone's like, oh, and, and it boosted Rory. No. To, I think the thing that I was trying to prove was that Rory, I think you had him much lower than pushing 30. I did. And that was what I was trying to say was going to happen no matter what because of the pricing setup, the field, et cetera, et cetera. It didn't matter that he came 19, 21st, and 23rd or whatever his three recent results were. That's not what it goes off of in a salary cap game. People, what can, How can you build your lineups? And that's why we try and focus on that as much as possible, right? Roster construction, leverage, correlation, how people are building, all of those factors. So before we really dig in and try to build out some lineups and figure out where we want to go, there are a bunch of guys this week who just come in with terrible form and no one wants to play them. Do you have any specific leans towards any of these guys that we can throw in? Because I'm terrified to use all of them, but I know that I have to use some of them because that's how these giant tournaments are won. I need to get the leverage 5% guy who's actually a good player. He just has no form. And I'm talking about just in order coming down. Hovland can't lay. Justin Thomas, Morikawa, Homa, Bryson, Burns, Jason Day, Hatton, Sungjae, Reed, Tom Kim, Ricky Fowler, Minwoo. So from 7,000 and up, like those guys, to me, just don't project out as being owned at all. Yeah. Hovland's going in the mix for sure. Really? Start of the season, I picked him to win. Uh, look what he was coming off of there. He's been fine here. It's been bad lately. It's just, again, talented-wise, guy that's already been in uh, into the cabin before, too. Only one way to get back into the cabin now, right? Top Am back in the day. So I think he was there the Tiger year, wasn't he? Was he? I, I can't remember now. I thought he was. He was a, it was, that, that was five years ago. Was he really like an amateur five years ago? It's, yeah. it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, it that's what it was. Yeah, it was 19, which is when Tiger won yeah. five years ago. Yeah, he was in... He was in the cabin there. So just to, to note it, I mean, like, I am I have interest in him. Some of the other guys you mentioned, like, I'm always, uh, the, the intervention, we've talked about that plenty of times. Actually, he has good history. He hasn't not been playing good, so he'll he'll make his way into some, but it's just more because where he's at, Thigala, Fleetwood, Connors, and then you got Hatton and M right in the middle there. I, I like both of those guys. And the one thing about Hatton is this course, not very, it's one of those ones where he just can't seem to figure it out and then he freaks out, which he always does. And then we saw it again last week, all the, the live, high, those were the best live highlights of last week. It's just him going psycho on that course. And he's got a different caddy. His caddy got some weird injury. So his guy's name is his buddy, Hugo Dobson, who actually caddied for him back in speaking of 2019 with him. It's just his friend. It was not a good finish that year either. 54th. So not sure if old Hugo Dobson is going to be able to help him out around here, but maybe the more experience does. He's 7,600 though. It's kind of a 
fair price when you think about it, I guess. I would play Hatton over him 100%. I'd I, play Hatton, like, of the, the low-owned guys in the $7,000 range, Hatton would be my And guy. I will commit to that, too. I, I think that's a good good call as well. Even <laughs> though I love Sung J.M. and I'm always going to play him and his history here is good, it's more of, um, just He's, like I said, that price on Hatton is for long-term talent. Mind you, the course history, the sticky course history this week, it doesn't help out. He doesn't have it, right? Well, it's, I mean, he does. He's got the experience. He just doesn't have the... He has no high-end finishes at right. the Masters, but he has, I think, two top 20s. He makes the cut every single year. Yep. Sung J right now looks like a guy who's going to miss the cut. The way yeah, he's he has not been, he's, he's figuring something out. It's not working. So I, I do struggle with it more this week. But like you said, I would still lean Hatton over him there. Uh, Morikawa at 84. Yeah, I got interest. He looks broken, man. He can't hit an iron. That's not good for him. Yeah, he's uh, more of the guy we, we talk about often on this show that you just have to really just say, look at the dude, two time major winner. I mean, this would, he gets this one. He's one away from the, the, grand, the slam. Grand, grand Slam. <laughs> he's sitting there with Rory and those guys. And remember when he won his second major? The numbers and the stats were literally comparison like to Tiger Woods at that time. Now it's yes. not been the same since, but he's also given up what two six stroke leads on a Sunday since then. Like it's been he could have a lot more going on to keep him in the mix even further of the conversation. Just golf, there, there's too many good golfers. Like there's way too many guys here. He's lost strokes on approach in three straight tournaments. Has never happened in his career before. Like that's supposed to be his thing, and he's bad right now just the misses so i will say and i agree but don't you think he's still the other thing is it's also the range because i was just about to make a, a brooks kepka conversation start but we'll wait on that for a second to say morikawa it's kind of a product of also what's around him, that he actually may still get ownership this week too so if you don't like him Ooh, really that may be well yeah because no one wants um homa I, I think Cam Young and Finau suck up a ton. Finau gets some, but I don't think Cam Young gets as much as you think. I'm thinking about betting Cam Young. JT's not getting any love. Yeah, there that could be a guy you add to your card. DJ will get a little bit of Masters love. Yes, I agree. It's here, but it's not going to be crazy. Cam Smith probably gets live slash Masters slash he's be still better than you think. No, love. see, like, see, I, I disagree on that because I think the betting market is telling us something about, and when you say a little bit of love, like I think Cam Smith will be like 10%. I'm saying 10. That's okay. Yeah. But I, just, I'm saying Finau is like 15 to 18. Yeah. And then I don't know that Cam Young actually gets it. So I actually think we could see Morikawa come closer to that 12 to 15 range where he's actually getting the love versus the 10% guys in here. It's not much. I'm just saying, I don't think people are leaving Colin Morikawa alone. Okay, so I'm good with fading Morikawa then. Right, that'd be a more more the reason for you if that's the, if that's you, how you feel. But just based on some of the names that you said, it sounds like the play actually here is Justin Thomas. Justin Thomas is definitely in my mix. Yep. Yeah, yeah, he's another guy that's this the same as Morikawa, that talent factor. Yeah, but he's not, he, but he's not playing poorly. He's just putting poorly. Yep, <laughs> even more so. Yeah, even better. Yeah, he's gained at least two strokes in approach on in every tournament except one, the one that everyone used him at Riv. And people don't, another reason people really don't want him right now is the bones factor. Drops well, I mean, bones wait, right hey, before, which is interesting, How right? about this? How about your caddy can't line you up a putt, and then you get rid of that guy? What, what's it going to do? Make him putt worse? That's impossible. Agreed. I think it's a good, but what's his number at right now? Betting-wise? Yeah. I think that he is down in the, he may have hit 50 somewhere. Still, I don't know, man. It's, not, <laughs> it's still a tough click, honestly. He's, he's 8,700 in DraftKings, much different than trying to say this guy going to win it, but 8,700. And also to note on Justin Thomas, sorry, but he can he can outscore that position big time. And there is one other guy. Okay, the best number on Cam Smith right now is 50. 45 is the best number Cam on Cam Young or Cam Smith? Cam Smith. Okay, what's Cam Young? Uh, Cam Young, the best number on him at the moment is 55. Okay. So like that's, that's what I mean about Cam Smith. Like He has dropped into this betting market area. Like He went from 28 to 50 real quick. I saw Hovland 45. Yeah, that was at one spot. He's generally 35 across the market as the best number, 30, 35. Don't love that. Like when people are showing you their like street books, like those aren't like real odds. <laughs> Feinberg? <laughs> yeah, like Fe Feinberg's like, oh, this guy is 113 to one. It's like, yeah, that number doesn't exist besides like Leo the bookie you got in his like weird online portal. That's amazing. Jeff might have a guy, Leo the bookie, actually. Might be possible. The, the issue I have with Cam Smith, and I think that he ends up coming in under. So I think there's the perceived notion that, you know, just from the betting market, they're telling us that he's not popular, and Hideki is right next to him. I was just going to say, yeah, I meant like in the eight, I'm talking just strictly 8K range. It's like Finau, I think Bryson, and so, Lowry is like the three that stand out, and then Morikawa and Cam Smith, DJ, those types of guys would be secondaries. For that range. Obviously, you got Hideki and Oberg right above Cam Smith. There's no way Cam Smith gets the ownership there. It's Hideki and it's Ludwig. I was surprised. I don't know if this comes to fruition. When I was looking at the very top, like the 10K range, people really aren't going to Wyndham Clark at all. No. 
And I'm, not as much Brooks as you would usually get here as well. No, it, it's Scotty and Xander. It's the Scotty factor, though, too, this year. And then, obviously, Xander, you just talked about. He's best by pricing. His major results speak for themselves. You can start your lineups with them. You can make them with Scotty work. Like I said, it's hard to get Scotty ROM lineups. And not hard. You can get them easy. I mean, more of seeing where you can actually feel good about what the breakdown we gave you is. Like, you also, you you almost need, like, a Scotty ROM top five showdown. Like, those two are in the mix, and then you need the other four to get up the board. And then you start looking down at your lineup and you're like, can I really see three of these guys getting into the top 10 to 20 range? That makes it a little bit tricky. But Scotty Xander very easily, uh, can you can see it because you get a little bit more boost in that lower 7K range where those guys, you said, there's just so many of them there that you feel good about. I think Brooks comes in higher than projections say. What yeah, do you th- yeah, I think around 12 to 15. I see. I think he'll come in above 15. You just, they will project out at 10 to 12. And then when people go to submit lineups, they'll be like, you know who's great in majors? Brooks Kepka. Click. Doesn't you know add- who doesn't win majors? Xander Shoffley. Unclick. I guess. Yeah. It doesn't add up, though, if Scotty's around 30 and, and uh, Xander's around 20 something. I, I think Rom gets squeezed. I think you might look at it like a sub 10% Rom. I have Rom underneath Rory. Still. Me too. I have Scheffler, Rory, Brooks, Rom, and Clark. And then Xander's like way above those three guys. Yeah, we'll see. Roster composition, I mean, like when you're setting it up, it's just you don't land on the Rom Brooks very often, and nobody wants Clark. So um, I still have Rom greater than Brooks, greater than Wyndham. I, I don't mind a Brooks Wyndham start. Yeah, I, I showed that up on the uh, the first look show yesterday with Hoop, and it was interesting. You actually, so just a note on that, so I bring it up, is you had Brooks and Wyndham left you basically the same average salary left for four golfers as, Scotty as just Scotty needing five. Not that that's the huge factor, just to show it off. It's nicer. If you feel like that Brooks Wyndham combo is solid, you got to feel good about if no Scotty, it could be one of those. Literally, Wyndham Clark was the guy two <laughs> behind him, two tournaments that Scotty won. So uh, that's, you know, thought process there. And then Brooks, you know, people don't like his Live Golf Miami numbers, but uh, I don't think that really matters. <laughs> no. <laughs> Worth anything. So, so. Like, even when we kind of scroll down, yeah, we, we say you put Scheffler in, you have 75, 80 remaining. So. Well, we'll build out a lineup in a second. I want to talk through this a little bit more because when Raza won the Thunderdome the year that Patrick Reed won, Patrick Reed was obviously the linchpin of that lineup. I think he was 8800 bucks and he was 7% owned. Hmm. I have Dustin Johnson, 8800 7% owned. I was going to say Justin Thomas, I have 8700 8% owned. Very similar, yeah. And I think I liked Thomas more than DJ, weirdly enough, as a DraftKings play. As an outright bet, I probably would lean towards Dustin, but I think that bell curve gets smoothed out a lot. Like the downside of D and listen, I don't want to pretend like there's not a downside of Justin Thomas. I've lived through the downside of Justin Thomas. It happens often when he starts missing two foot putts on the regular, but I do think a caddy change is good for him. I like your angle of it probably can't get worse. I know people always say that. And I, disagree with it sometimes because i'm like when people say oh he can't putt like that tomorrow he lost seven strokes putting in a round that's like impossible to do yeah that's not likely to happen but what the same goes both ways when someone gains four and they're like oh he for showdown he won't do that tomorrow probably not but what if he gains two and a half that's still a pretty good day probably forever for what the round looks like it's the same thing in reverse he's not going to lose as much as he has been losing but he could be very similar or still lose quite a bit so it, it can go both ways would you fade cam young or Fino? So I think I'm going to do, if I'm going to play Justin Thomas and Cam Smith, I think I'd rather fade Finau than Cam Young. I just think Cam Young's a great play here. Yeah, I don't really have a preference. I, I tend to like all the guys around them better. DJ, JT. Uh, what, what is it against Cam Young? I'm curious. I, I don't really have anything against him. Just He's like one of those guys. Him. He has great form coming in. Four yeah. or seven top tens in majors. Top ten here last year. Like, And he has the power type of game listen if he comes second this week that's fine <laughs> yeah it's just more of a preference of the range he's still in the mix for sure again this 85 this 8k range is like 8 7 6 15 11 12 13 like the the ownerships that i'm listing off there's just no way people can get here because it's typically the scotty lineups will will get to a 9k guy and then drop down there's so many good 7k plays that one of the easiest ways to get different this week is sort of max two 7k guys because three or four is going to be super common in roster construction. So if you can do it from that perspective, that'll tell you everything you need to know. And then that'll force you. But if you go like two 9K guys, two 8K guys, and two 7K guys, and your picks are Cam Young and Justin Thomas, and then you still can get your, you know, if you like Xander and somebody else and Ludwig, like that's feels pretty good start for four guys. You just got to remember that Scotty's probably going to be in the mix. And if Scotty's in the mix, you got to hope the lineups that he's in bust with some of that 7K chalk down low. 
Head over to Underdog Fantasy right now. Get that deposit match of up to 100 bucks. But if you use code MAYO with the Masters coming up, we got some extra special bonuses for you on top of everything. If you use code MAYO right now at underdogfantasy.com, you will unlock not one, but two free squares for Masters Week. You'll get the Scotty Scheffler free square that everyone is getting higher or lower than 0.5 strokes on Thursday. However, by using code Mayo, you unlock the Jordan Spieth free square for Thursday, higher or lower than 0.5 strokes as well. Those will become available Tuesday of Masters Week, but get in now at Underdog Fantasy using code Mayo to make sure that you have the best advantages possible. You want to build some lineups? Always. Let's do this. Was there anyone in the 6K range that you did like? Because I have a few guys that I like. I think there's a conversation to be had right off the top about Denny McCarthy. Pass. 6,200. Pass. Yeah, so what's your, what, go ahead and then I'll, I, I have a take too, so. Well, I mean, if he doesn't gain 17 strokes between chipping and putting, he's going to miss the cut by eight, <laughs> so pass. It just makes no sense. That's what I'm saying. Like, uh, <laughs> I get it and you land there. There's just, the point is, is that for everything people talk about Rory last week, Oh, he just did what he always does. He shows up on a Sunday when it doesn't matter. Everyone's going to say, look how good he played. Look at that round four. It meant nothing, but they're going to talk about his T3 coming into the Masters. Isn't that exactly what Denny did? I know there's a price game here, so 6,200 matters. But now you can see where people can easily just start Scotty and Denny and have all the money in the world. Yeah. No, I I think he's going to be highly owned. So who else there? Like Malnati just won. Shank has been playing pretty good coming in. Shank's all putting right now. Sure. Does I mean, you need a putt here. You need a putt well. No, here. I understand that. But if that's the only thing you're doing well, I don't want you. Yeah. I just think good pivot. Um, I, but anyway, Glover, Eckrote. There's definitely guys in this range. Grio, Taylor Moore Taylor people Moore's seem the, to like. Taylor, Taylor Moore's the name. You like Taylor Moore? Yeah. I bet him at 300 to 1. Mainly for his top eight odds. But I, I really like Taylor Moore here. And I like Thorbjorn Olison at 65. I liked what I saw from him last week, Tee to Green. He's never missed a cut here. It's been a while since he's played, but in his three starts, he's made all three cuts and top 20 twice. Top so it looks 10. like people like McCarthy, Moore, and even Moronk's getting a little love too. I could see Moronk. I, I think on paper, he rates out really well, like when you think about what his skill set is, but he is terrible on and around the greens, and that is worrisome for me, so fade. Like, I don't want to go too much down in here. The one I had the big question about, because I assumed he would be super highly owned, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be the case, is Sergio. I think he's still going to get the love, though, but we'll see. He's, he's fine. I think uh, I'm going to mix him in. 6,800, right? Yeah. Like, how, how high do you, do you think he breaches double digits? I think it's 7 to 10, possible. Okay, I mean, I'm fine with that. It's fine. Like, you can get different anyway, so. It's just with the amount of, like, that's the one thing, getting out of the online bubble a little bit about people who both follow Live, play DraftKings, and PGA, and are talking about Masters DraftKings pricing a week out. Like, following Sergio, it's like, oh, he's winning at Doral. He's playing really well at Doral. da 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 It's like, everyone's just talking about Sergio. Turns out that's probably not actually the case. Yes, exactly. And what, what about Benny Ann getting into the field at 6,700? Can't do it. Okay. I think people are doing it. Are they? Has Not he- like, again, it's for a $6,700 guy. Nowadays, when we talk about this stuff, got to be clear on that. It's still sub 10, but it's like, if is you talk about guys that are pushing towards it, it looks like early on that because of the way he projects out, it's a guy that could get a little love down here. I think, I mean, listen, I don't want to say that he's lost it, but I am very discouraged by his past two starts where he had been so uber consistent T to green and that just went away. Now he did that last time. He had a v- bad Pebble Beach. He had a bad Phoenix and then rebounded very nicely at Riv, at Honda, at API, and then he went into the tank again. So it's obviously he's able to rebound from that, but I don't know. There are other guys that I like more, so I'd rather like Taylor more. I'd rather just go that route instead. And Tiger. Would you play Tiger? Yeah, I'm going to play a little Tiger. 68 is a pretty good price. It's fair, The price is fair. I know people say it's paying the rake or whatever. I'm not going to have a bunch of this guy. I'm not going to make a huge case for him, but um, it's just different, right? Like it's not no like one's Freddie it. Couples and making a run and then falling off on Sunday or, or, or anybody like that. It's way, it's way different. It's a guy that can sort of find his way into it and do it. I don't think we're going to see anything crazy from him, but if he lands in one, I'm, I'd be fine with it. 6,800 bucks. Build out some hand builds with him probably is what I'll do. I, I worry about Thursday for him in particular, or if he yeah. get, or if he gets out early on Friday, like I think it might be tea time dependent for him when I look at it, because it's, it looks like it's, it's like 50 degrees. And you guy. should, you probably shouldn't play tigers. Just that it's tigers. So if you, you're having fun, you're watching the masters, you love golf. Uh, I've been there before the year he won in 2019. I was sitting like top 10 in the hundred dollar Millie maker. And then three of my five or three of the six guys went into the water on 12. 
It was like Finau, Poulter, and Mol- Molinari. I didn't have Molinari. It was somebody else. But anyway, then Tiger came back, and I don't think he ended up being in the optimal or the the winning lineup. But it was like just because of his comeback that uh, it's screwed me. So I don't know. Tiger's fine, but it'd be like a hand build. I'm not making a case. Uh, the other one that I'm going to play from 63. If everyone's just going to play Denny McCarthy, I'll go hundred dollars more and play Charles. Interesting. I, I like Eckroat. I like Glover and Eckroat. I can see both those with the ball striking. I I do. They need I, stuff to go their way. But and again, I'm not talking about maybe plugging them both in together. But just to say, if you picked one, I'd be okay with it because it's just right there where McCarthy's at and some of those other guys that people are going to. So I don't hate it. Yeah. What did Charles finish this week? It seemed like all the South Africans did pretty well. Just because Burmeester won, I think Louis was there. What about Bubba? Bubba sixty four hundred. I, I don't know what to do with him. What do you want to do with him? I like. He was the guy at sixty four hundred. Taylor Moore is going to pop. I get it, but just taking some shots on these guys. This is where you kind of can get different and still have the experience and the ability. It's just such, it's, that's the course. It's not like people talk about the course history is sticky and stuff like that. It's just nonstop. If you watch golf forever, it's, it's people know what to do around there. You have to almost, you, all, you almost see it with the progression of everybody, right? Bad year or a missed cut, but like not, not very often. Thigala came out last year and had a, a good first time, but like, it's not very often first timers go off. I think uh, Justin Ray was doing all those stats last night and he was on the show with you all that. So he said, like, there's one guy every year. That does, like, what was it, Zalatoris, it was Tigala last year. Like, there, there's guys that will come out and have a good first year. Oh, yeah. But it's, I mean, that's part of the, sometimes the form coming in, just the ability, getting lucky, different factors, versus typically, you really got to know the stuff, and these backstops, and where to hit it, and the around the green is different, and everything you talked about, so. Yeah, it's, um, it's still a shot maker's course. Like, if you go out and drive it excellently, and hit approaches, like, into birdie range, and make some putts, you're going to do well. Man, I love it so much. It's just the best because of that. Like you said, like you go out. You know where you got to hit it, almost. Even if you do know it, and you got it like the back of your hand. It's like you know where you got to put it, but then you got to do it. You got to put it there. It's like there actually is the way to build the puzzle properly, but it's whoever has the best chance. And that's kind of the the up top stuff about Rory versus Scheffler of the conversation. Even Rory mentioned about Scotty. Scotty and his caddy were talking about about just n- Scotty's in like Scotty's ability to just know when to lay up or when to go right at it, when to be right of it, like all the stuff that he does. That's the the skill set right now that them being able to execute on it just makes it that much crazier. Well, the one big difference that I saw, and this is one round in Houston, the very last round that I watched him play, it was the first time all year I saw Scotty was off with his distance control. He was missing his targets by like two or, th- by like two or three yards. Mm-hmm. But it was leaving him like he wasn't hitting every green regulation. He was leaving himself short, short, short-sided chips where, man, at the players, he put everything, even if it was like to the left or it was to the right, it was pin high every single time. Like, it was to the proper level, which you need to do with the Masters in order to execute. I just thought it was strange that that was, it just came off, unless he's, he's human. He's not just some sort of robot person who's out there making the perfect shot every time. For sure. But it feels like that a lot of the time when you watch him, that it was just weird to see him a little bit off. Yeah, it, it is crazy, but I think that was the conversation from Rory that I was just bringing up, is where maybe Rory is thinking of that now, too, and... I don't know. R- Rory's ten eight, quite quite a bit cheaper than Scotty here. It's just if you you know if some people feel like you're chasing because of the last week that one round, and I don't disagree with the conversation around that. I'm just saying it's not like Rory has a bad history here. It's two missed cuts in the last three years, though, is a bit concerning. But it's Rory at the Masters. He knows what he needs to do to close it up. There's going to be a, you know a year that he gets it. I think it just when. Well, Cus said he had no chance to win this year. So that's maybe the, good maybe, news. Maybe that's the best shot that he's got. Yeah. So the best. DFS tournament that you can play this week will be on Underdog Fantasy. It will be released about 20 minutes after tea times are released. The Pat Mayo Experience Classic. It is rake free. It is $20. There's 504 people, over $10,000 of guaranteed rake free money in the pool. It's a draft against six people. You pick the six guys that you want just for Thursday. Uh, Try to get yourself some of that rake free money. And if you use code Mayo to sign up right now at Underdog Fantasy, you will get that deposit match of 100 bucks and the bonus free square for Jordan Spieth in the Pick'em game, and you'll have the ability to do those drafts. Even if you don't live in one of the Pick'em states, like Pennsylvania is not a Pick'em state, Florida is not a Pick'em state, you can still do the drafts. So you can get your money in, you can get your bonus for it, and you can get in the rake-free draft for the Pat Mayo Experience Classic and the $10 Albatross with $50,000 up on first place. And if you do live in a Pick'em state, use Fantasy National Pick'em Guide to go with some of those free squares. Scotty lineups, start with those. Yeah. Scotty, 12-1. So let's try to build the most generic lineup we can do here. I think the Gala goes in this. Yep. I think Fitz, Fitzpatrick, too. Are you seeing that much love for Fitz? Big time. Really? Why? 
history. I, I think he's never missed a cut and always had some mix, some good scores mixed in coming off top finishes. Uh, what was it? A fifth at the players. Like he, he's going to be in the mix. 7,900. Do you, do you think that he's more owned than Lowry is? It's going to be close. I think, um, we do another hundred. We you try to get your hundred back. I'll take, I'll take Fitz over Lowry. I think you think Lowry's going to be higher. I was, yeah, no, I actually don't know. Oh, okay. I thought, I, thought I, I just assumed it would be Lowry just based on. Could be, that? could be both. He fits into this lineup. Does he? Well, I, I think we go Fleetwood after that. Okay. Henley. And then we have 76. What does that leave us with? Actually, this is actually perfect for if you wanted to deploy Hatton. But what you could do is just play Connors instead. It's Connors. Yeah. There it is. So that's the lineup. And it's probably Lowry over Fitzpatrick because people want to maximize everything that they have. So we leave no money on the table. And the lineup becomes Scheffler, Lowry, Thigala, Fleetwood, Henley, Connors. That's there a pretty is. common lineup right there. Yep. Definitely. And, and then what did I say? How many 7K guys? Four to five, depending on if you go Lowry or not. And if we just kind of repeat that exact same lineup and we do Lowry and Fitz, you just take Fleetwood down to Siwoo. And what can you do? You turn Connors into Fitzpatrick. Yep, that's it. All these builds. Like this is, this is the build this week that people are, the first thing that they're going to do is make this build. Somewhere very close to this. Yeah. So how do we get different with this lineup? Max two 7K guys. All right, so let's, let's build that out then. So Scotty, with yeah, well, who do we want to take out first? Do we think who, uh, take, who, take out Siwoo and Henley? Because I'm, I'm, I guess to start it, let's say it this way: Fitzpatrick and Thigala would be the two seven K guys where I think people land. Maybe Fleetwood over. If we need two hundred bucks, just change Thigala or Fitzpatrick to Fleetwood. But I think those are the three where it starts there. All right, let's try this. Let's put Cam Young in and Taylor Moore in. And see what we got now. We got seventy three hundred dollars left. So now we're out of the. We only have one seven K guy in right now. So that lands us back on Henley if we want to. So Minwoo, Fowler, Rose, Henley, Batia, Scott, Siwoo, Jagger, Nick Taylor, or we can just manipulate it some other way and try to get like Sergio into this. Get rid of Cam Young, and that gets us up to Hideki if we want to. So what's the lineup with Hideki? It's Scheffler and Hideki with Lowry. So 12, 9, 8, Thigala, Taylor, Moore, Sergio. This is like a, a real vintage Masters Millionaire Maker lineup. Scheffler, Thigala, Matsuyama, Moore. Sergio and Lowry. Lowry and Sergio, there we go. All right. And that's about... You can see it up here, by the way. Oh, yeah, there you go. Paul I'm, I'm looking off my... I want to see projections, that's why. But, uh, yeah, it's like 30 points off the originals. So yeah. it's not going to be... I mean, I prefer this lineup. Oh, for sure. And as I said, it's good because it's also not going to be as common as you would think. That's what's going to happen. Anybody who's taking optimals or project projections, building them out that way, even setting rules like this, they're just going to land on lineups that are 30 points better and take the common builds that we talked about. For sure. And, like, even in... So let's try to... This is probably an extreme example of how we just manipulated that very first lineup because we went from five, seven, or four, seven K guys to one yeah. very quickly. Let's try to think about it in terms of a single entry or a three max. Before and, you move on it quickly, just to say it, though, because yeah. you, you said it, I want to just tack on because we mentioned it earlier, like Scotty, obvious. Lowry, Thigala, Matsuyama playing incredible, have history here that's solid, literally a, a Masters champion. Lowry's four straight top 25s or whatever it is on top of his recent results. Thigala, seventh year last year, playing great golf. Can you see those four fit our mold? Yes. Moore and Garcia is now what you're down to, but to your point, why you kind of probably like this lineup, could you see Sergio being the guy that comes through at a course that he's T9. already won it and do what he needs to do? Yes. And then can you see Taylor Moore Making a few outscoring the spot and still getting like a, you know, could finish T30 or T28 or something, but score in the top 20 and be more than enough to close it out because this isn't a popular construction Overall, and it's, it projected way less, but then it has the guys to be able to put the points up. So um, that's the type of lineups that I'd be looking to build. And when you're looking at your pool, make your lineups like that. Yeah, and if you want to change it to like Bubba and Olison or like whoever the two 6K, like upper 6K, lower 6K guy, guys that you like. It doesn't need to be the guys that I like. It could be anyone, really. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to look at Eagle, right? Because Eagles will happen here. This we know. So the best players over the past 50 rounds total in terms of Eagle rate per round. EVR, Minwoo, Ludwig, Rom, Connors, Bryson, Harris English, who I do like, Wyndham Clark, Hideki, Cam Smith, and Burns, and then Sergio. All right, let me just go back here for a second. I want to just take some of those names. EVR, 
English, Matsuyama, Bryson. Who are some of the other ones at the top, you said? Minwoo, Ludwig, and Rom. Rom? Let me go Rom. So it turns And shit. is there, uh, is, was Lowry up there at all? Uh, no. Lowry is in this number, is 22nd. Like, he's not bad. So this is way lower owned and projects 10 points better than the one we just did. And I just took it from what you said. And Lowry's kind of the guy that just lands there, but it's not like he's outside the top 25. You've got Rom, Hideki, Bryson, Lowry, English, EVR. If you don't think we could see a board that has Rom, Bryson, Hideki, Lowry, I mean, I can see that easily. And then Harris English definitely can find his way up to the top 10, and EVR can score. So that, that's an example, again, like this has, well, who's owned in this? Like EVR, nothing, English, Hideki. nothing, Bryson. I think Bryson comes in higher owned than people think, so I will correct that. But whatever extra you want me to put on Bryson's page, take some away and, and chop it off the top of Rom, who, like you said, probably gets squeezed. People are going to find a way to make this into a Scheffler lineup, and rightfully so. I get it. I'm just saying this would be fine. And then Lowry rounds it out. He's, he's fine. So I just immediately took Bryson out of this lineup. I'm playing sure. 0% Bryson and just turn, turned it into Burns, who I also don't like, but I like better than Bryson. Who, had, who else had eagle rate in that range? Burns. Burns did? Burns was 11th. And so, yeah, you, you, I mean, that's what you get in the difference, but... Yeah. Do you like Bryson this week? It depends. I mean, if this is the stickiest place with course history, and this guy has terrible course history, like, just uh, why are we going to him? Yeah, just million. It's, it's 475,000 people you're trying to win. A no, I, I understand against, that, so. but you just said, like, it's not like he's going to be unowned either. Like, people that's are the, using That's Bryson. the question I have. If he starts to pick it up there, then that's where the difference lies. But again, 82. You're playing a guy for potential talent. He has been playing a lot better overall. It hasn't just been the same game that we're always used to. I prefer him, obviously, at a. U.S. Open, but, you know, the practice, you know, that he gets, uh, he keeps talking about this course. Maybe he's got enough practice in now. We'll see. So I want to go back to the Scheffler, Hideki, Lowry with the Garcia and Moore for a second to try to fix this up to be like a three max type of thing. Do you think we could turn the Gala, if we go like the Gala down, although I just like the Gala. I think I'd rather keep the, would you rather keep the Gala or Lowry? Lowry. I like the Gala, but we, he's, he's much more boom bust. It's almost like the Henley versus... Siwu and Batia, it's going to be Lowry, clean and clear, like just does his job, and maybe you get some upside. I think you were having the conversation with Ray last night on, on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, saying like, hey, maybe he does get that putting. And, and Justin Ray was like, by the way, round four at the Masters is different than round four in general, your stat that you've been using. And so uh, interestingly enough, like you said, that's an automatic win for Lowry. It's just he is more of the safe play versus Thigala is the boom bust guy, but when he booms, it's pretty solid. I mean, I wouldn't even say that he's boom bust. He's either boom or like, Eh. The and doesn't come through in tournaments. No, it doesn't. But I, so I, I think I guess qualify. I only think of it in one way streets in that in that topic. Yes. Like Thigal is 35th. Is, can he outscore it too? Yes. But if it's one of those 31 through 45 type weeks, probably not needed. Sure. And like Especially what, with the range what, he's in. L Lowry has that sort of downside as well. Of course. Yeah. But it's just he hasn't here. Like when you look four years in a row and you look what his stuff recently is, it's been much better. So it's kind of what you want coming in. Doesn't mean shit when we get to the Masters. Can change on a dime. So I turned that lineup that we had. I took the, da the Gala down to Henley. Sergio up to Batia, and I took more up $100 to Thorbjorn Olison at 65 So now we have Scotty, Hideki, Lowry with Henley and Batia and Olison. Batia. And it's not going to rate out well because Olison's in this lineup. Yeah, still fine though. And I guess this is my take again back to it is like Scotty, Lowry, Matsuyama probably feel pretty good, right? Yeah. But now you got to look at your other three spots. Could you see Henley in the top 10? Yes. I can. He's fine, and I know some of them aren't that way, and 14th and stuff, whatever, yeah. but he can do it. And then you see Batia, but it's like then this is what you have to consider. Batia and Olison. I don't know, but this is what you're taking a risk on, and Olison looked pretty good last week. Remember playing him in round four showdown just because of that? And then also the other guy that uh, we're talking about was the eventual winner. So Yeah, who's approach game has just which, been By the awful. way, I give a lot of credit to that, too. I know we're not going to make the Batia show, but like, that, you know, People will say, if he does lose this, you can't call him a choker because he obviously didn't choke. No shit. Like, that's the whole point. But the fact that 
wire to wire. The man wrote WTW with a permanent marker on his wrist to look at it all day to be able to go out there and get the job done. Then has this dude attacking him <laughs> that can just attack flags and make putts because it's Denny McCarthy and with nothing to lose. It's like he either does or he doesn't. It's funny. The moment Denny had something to lose, he turned back into Denny immediately. That's so funny you said that because that's what I was just going to say. And then he goes in the water right out of the gate and, you know, just like uh, reminded me people were talking about like the speed shot, the year of the Willet. Right? Just uh, the first one when you're like, oh, he's got this thing pretty much locked up. Or wait, he doesn't. And then that happens. Kind of what happened to Denny there. But Tabatia just to continue on and then do it in the playoff and all that while this guy's sort of biting at your ankles all day. It's just, t- it's just insane. So um, he can definitely do it. And then Olison becomes your one-off. That's why I don't mind a lineup like this. And just so you know, still projects pretty well too. So this is one that I wanted to squeeze in here. I, can I make it work? I can. And this is a variation of that 4-7K, but I think it's different enough to get it in. So, so it's this... Brooks and Clark to start off. So I don't mind fading Rom and Rory and Scheffler. Like, if I'm going to, like, listen, I'm not going to play 100% Scheffler, so some lineups aren't going to have him in it. Right. So this is the range that I kind of like to go to a little bit more. Brooks, Wyndham Clark, and then with Hatton to go with it in that 76 range. So it goes Hatton, English Fleet with the Gala. And you can manipulate that around if you wanted to turn Hatton into Taylor Moore. You could probably get the Gala up to Cam Smith or something like that, which might be a better version of this lineup. But this is the style of lineup I think I like the best. Yeah, this would be considered the, it's not who you play, it's how you play them. Because while you are going back to the roster construction that's common with three to four 7K guys, and you are playing some of the popular 7K guys with Fleetwood and Thigala being the ones, you've sort of meshed it in as those are your popular guys because you don't have Scotty, Hideki, Xander, the ones up top. So because you went Brooks and Wyndham, English and Hatton to round it out in the 7Ks, you get away with it, and this actually projects really well at the lowest ownership. Uh, it's the best projected at the lowest ownership that we've seen yet, put it that way. Really? Okay. For, it's not the best projected. I'm going to say it's the best projected with low ownership, and it's still set up where... Um, you've got two 10K guys, nobody at no Scotty, no 9Ks, no 6Ks. So it does make it unique from that perspective. So let's try this one now. So it's Brooks and Wyndham Clark, and I've taken out Hatton, and I've taken out Fleetwood, and I've turned that 2v2 into Taylor Moore and Justin Thomas at 64 and 78 instead of 76 and 75. And how would, do you think that projects out? Because I don't think you're going to see a lot of Brooks, Wyndham, Justin Thomas starts. Yeah, who was the other guy with Fleetwood you took out? I have it, but I just can't Hatton. remember who I took out. No, yeah, Fleetwood and Hatton took out. Yeah. For JT and Moore. For JT and Moore. Yeah. Definitely doesn't project as good, and I don't think it's as good on paper either. Okay. So let's, For me, I just uh, that, just what? thinking about it out loud, like JT and Moore are definitely in play, so it's nothing wrong with it. And this is, again, that's the whole point for tournaments. It's not really about the projection, but I like those other so two guys more. Let's do this. Let's take out Thomas, and we'll take out the Gala, and we'll turn those guys into Cam Smith, in Fleetwood. Oh, that's interesting. So now you got Brooks, Win- Windy C, and Cam Smith with Fleetwood. Four guys that I think people... I don't think people are trusting Cam Smith, but we know what his upside is. I think that people are trusting Fleetwood. Do you want Fleetwood or Connors? I might have to go with my Canadian guy. We'll see how it actually shakes out, but man. I, I think you can interchange them this week. Like, if you told me one of those guys won, the answer would be Fleetwood. But if you told me that one of these guys finished T8, it's probably Connors. <laughs> that's the thing. How, how does it actually shake out? Does Tommy ever, is Tommy going to do the old, uh, you know, the guy trying to break, you know, you know I'm going to break 100 in golf, and you go out and you actually break 90? Yeah. It's like, oh, shit, he went for it. It's like <laughs> yeah, Tommy, to, Tommy by a touchdown. Yeah. Seven-stroke win at the Masters. Yeah. Has, imagine, hasn't won on the PGA Tour imagine, and wins the Masters. Imagine how that would change the narrative of his career if he just came out and smoked everyone this week. Yeah, it's the same as everybody we talk about. Xander. Yeah, Zan- Xander's the same All way. those close calls. You, you, you called this. This was you. You, you. All those close calls turn into he's, oh, of course. That's what happens when you touch the top that often. You're going to get to the top eventually and get it. Boom. And Fleetwood, same thing. Well, we know he won overseas a bunch. It wasn't like he couldn't win. He literally couldn't win on the BGA <laughs> Tour. And this is the Masters. So it's kind of funny that it does. it's not exactly the same, but it would be huge trajectory change, like you said, just how people talk about him. So did that lineup project out better than the last That's one? That's the worst of all of them. That's the worst of all of them playing it. It's a winner. Million bucks right Not there. that it, Again, that's what people need to understand. Projections, piece of the puzzle, right? The key is sort of finagling it around to see what we're talking about and what makes sense. Could you see this make sense? So on your, your last one you had, just to run it quickly, it was still Brooks and Wyndham, sure. That makes up for no Scotty. Fleetwood, Cam Smith, Harris English. Those are all guys that could be in the top 10. And then Taylor Moore is your guy that outscores. That, well, it projected the worst of those three, 
look how I just said it. Those other five, you could definitely see a board that has Kepka, Clark, Fleetwood, Cam Smith, and Harris English all in the top 10 with one of them being the winner. So Brooks, whatever. And then it's more just has to score. We haven't touched on Xander or Neiman really at all here. And they do seem to be the ones that people like Xander for sure. You said best buy pricing. 90, Zan- 99 sure. cents. Yes. And then you have Neiman directly under him. I Listen, Neiman's going to draw ownership as he should. But if we go Scheffler, Xander to start, which I think that people will, that'll be the natural inclination for people when they start lineups. Like who are the two guys I feel the best about this week? Those are the two guys. So you got 12 and 9, 9. That leaves you $7,000 left. Do you think you can make lineups out of this? And this is where I think that Sergio might end up getting a bunch of ownership in, um, line, in this lineup in particular. So I have it right now. It projects the best of any we've made all day. So can I, can I try to guess game. it? I don't think you're going to get it if you have Sergio. I'll just start there. Oh, okay. Well, that's not good. Then. It's, it's just when you go down to Denny. Oh, Denny. Yeah. yeah. And now you can probably round it out quite easily. Yeah. So let's see here. Let's get rid of Sergio. Let's get Denny. Oh, you've already got it. Yeah, Siwoo, Henley, Pick and Fleetwood or Connors. Fleetwood or Connors. We'll throw Connors into that one. All right, and that would be the, yeah. No. Yeah, that's about as... Uh, I think ch- it's, it might be Fleetwood that people go to, because what you said, but either way, point being... It's one of the... It's, this it's, is the other thing, why people are so comfortable, Pat. Scotty and Xander. They think that's... Oh, there's, the, there's two... There's the, you got first and second right there. You got first and second place in your lineup is how people perceive it. Siwoo, Henley, Connors... Easy game. Look at those guys. Look at their ability. And then Denny, man, the guy just lost in a playoff. He's close. Like everything, boom, there's your lineup. So I don't, again, moving this around. Let's move it around. Let's move. Is I think you end up having to make pivot plays. But I will say the Xander conversation is very interesting and reminiscent of what we discussed last week, if you recall, with the Rory Connors that I kept lobbying for and I know there was other versions of it but I kept saying that you know that's going to be so common and I don't like just starting with Corey Connors because I felt like you're leaving a ton at the top you have to feel well I know people are very comfortable with it when we have soft pricing like this and I know everyone works with the same soft pricing when you're starting with Xander and leaving Wyndham Brooks Rory Rom, and Scheffler Two of the last three, uh, two of the last major champions at this tournament specifically, and then Kepka, who was second here last year, Clark, Rory, etc. It doesn't feel as good. So what I'm saying is, I think the pivot is going Scotty without Xander and picking your guy, whether it's Hovland, Cantley, Spieth, Zal, Ludwig, whatever you want to do there. That can get you into a different territory with a similar style build and not be as common as what everybody else is doing, or starting with the balanced. Xander lineup, which people will feel very safe with. So here's the balanced Xander lineup that I just built. I manipulated that one into this one. So I got rid of Scheffler. So it starts with Xander, like you said. So yeah. it's Xander, Neiman, Hideki. So three nines to start off. I don't think you're going to, like, generally speaking, the balance build at the Masters and at major championships is something that people go to very often. They love it. I just don't think you're going to see that this week. I, d- I disagree. Like I said, I'll build it in a second. So that actually projects about 25 points less than the one we just did. So I'm just going to quickly change it here to go. So Neiman, so just to say it, it's Xander, Neiman, Hideki with Henley, Connors, and Sergio. Yep. And you can literally land on it. There's Here's the one of the most common lineups of the week, whether we say it on this show or not. Okay. I already have it. Xander, Hideki, Lowry, Fitzpatrick, Thigala, Fleetwood. Oh, but okay. I got the sneaky balanced one. Yeah, you no, t- yeah, I, I agree with you. That is the sneaky, but that's only two nine k guys, though. Correct. Like that's, I'm that's saying, like, that the three nine k balance is the three nine k can make it different. That's what I was trying. Last week uh, I was using it in reverse with Connors. Last week I said to people because Connors was a little lower priced in the nines. I said you could make Connors your. I said I would rather make Connors my third guy in, or pivot off him as a second man in, or be off him altogether than use him as my lead man. And this is an example. There's still ways to get different with Xander. I think if you go, you know, Xander, Hovland, Zalatoris, yeah, you got a pretty sneaky starting with Xander lineup. But this lineup here, I mean, this will be duped in the Mega Millie this week, guaranteed. The 22-22 Mega lineup will have this, our guy Sky is going to post it out who duped the lineup. This lineup right here will be duped. How much was Batia? 72. So that turns into Siwoo. Or English is right there as well. I can see, like, I, I like this version of the lineup. You lead with Brooks. So it's Brooks, Hideki, Zalatoris as your first three in. Let's see this one. Because I'm very comfortable leading with Brooks. Okay, I might end up just betting Brooks. You can do, uh, they, 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 they got rid of the 50. It's now a 40. Yeah. 50. Three spots. Who gives a shit? Yeah, but the 50's gone. Oh, okay. 
It's now 40, not 50. 50 was enticing. Well, 50 was enticing. I, I should have bet it on the show when I did the live show last night because someone asked me about that in particular. What I'm talking about is that there was a bet at Bet365 where you had to play the each way on it. So you got half your bet went to Brooks winning and half your bet went to Brooks top three finish. However, he was 22 to one at the time. So if you bet $100 on Brooks at whatever it was, at 22 to one, right. you would get 2,200 bucks. If you bet $50 on Brooks at 50 to one, you get 2,500 bucks and have $50 on the out of the top three anyway. Yeah, I was capped, so. Oh, you got capped on it? I didn't yeah, even click on it. It was 40-40 so. for me. Okay, but either way. Still whatever. Yeah. Like, it was more beneficial to bet that than to bet on the outright. Yeah, if you, again, it was, it's usually, like just mathematically usually those are like sense. the sucker bets, but in this case, the math worked, but it's also, they're throwing that out there because the books obviously don't believe in Brooks Kepka this week, even though it's Brooks Kepka at a major. And honestly, imagine him playing this Masters that many times. You don't think he pulls it off? Like, he literally almost won it last year and probably should have. So I'm with you on these builds, like Brooks, Zalatoris, you got Decky in here. Yeah, with the Gala, English, and Garcia. And there's $100 left over. So you could upgrade English to Siwoo if you wanted to. You could downgrade Sergio to Thorbjorn, Moore, Denny, whoever it is that you like, Charl, and then upgrade that English spot to a Fleetwood or whoever it might be. Yeah. I was looking at the other one. So you pulled that one up. I was just trying to see if you did go like Xander, Hovland, Decky. Yeah. Yeah. If you turn Sergio into Taylor Moore, you can turn Harris English into Fleetwood or Connors. Or Patrick Reed, who I did not mention, who I am playing. So read. There's the lineup. Who's your guy? English, you said? This one's kind of interesting. I, I, I don't mind it. And then do you like uh, Henley or Batia? I think I like Henley. I like both of them. Maybe the answer is play them both together. But yeah. I, I, you know what? In this lineup, play Batia. Okay. And so you could go Xander, Hovland, Decky, Reed, Batia, English. So one Could thing, I see this? Yes. It's like, I know it's off the board and the ownership's low and stuff, but I, I could definitely see those guys being at the top. Okay. So let's try something different then. We've used Hideki in like every lineup. Let's get rid of Hideki. Yeah. And I like Zalatoris. I think Zalatoris is my preference of all the guys that are there. I like him more than Ludwig. I like him more than Cantley. I like him more than Spieth. It's Zalatoris or Cam Smith for me in that like general range of the guys that I like. Are you wanting to try and start one with Zal or use him as your second guy? You, in as use him as, to, use that, him as the second guy in. Yeah, which again, it works to the same conversation I was having about Xander to Hideki, right? We, we looked at it too earlier. Scotty Hideki, very easy to start with and still feel comfortable with the bottom of your lineup. I like putting them, I like putting a guy like Zal or um, Spieth or Hovland or Cantlay as your second guy in to it to already set yourself up different for if you are going to land in a similar range. And then obviously I think you still got to make some pivots down low. You can't just jam all the chalk, but I do think that's a one way, uh, one way to start it off where we saw last week where it was like uh, Fleetwood destroyed Connors. That was the one I used last week was Rory Fleetwood was my starting point. And I talked about it quite a bit on shows and on the site over at Chip it Nation and stuff. But the main thing was I didn't like Connors as the second man in and I didn't like him as the starting point. So I flipped it and said, I'm going to go off of that. Connors makes the cut whatever, whatever, but Fleetwood was obviously way up the board versus him and made quite a bit of difference in GPPs. So I can still get Brooks into this. I can start Brooks, Zal, Cam, Smith if I want to. Okay. Or I can change Brooks into Xander, Brooks into Clark, or find the money to get to Rory or Rom. Is there a way that you can avoid... Is there a way that you can build this lineup and cap at 2-7K, guys, and feel good about it? I mean, yeah. I mean, like you I'm, like Taylor I'm, I'm, I'm Moore, doing, I guess. I'm, or... I'm doing that right now as we speak. I oh, I didn't t- see the full one up there. My bad. So, yeah, so I only have the two 7K. Taylor Moore, Reed, Thigala. Sorry, this is the problem not looking at the board. Yeah, Thigala and Patrick Reed are the two 7K guys. But I could downgrade Thigala into Henley or Siwoo or Batia or Fleetwood or Connors or whoever and have two low 7K guys to find the money to upgrade Brooks if that's what I wanted to do. Do you like Smith or Oberg? Smith. Okay. Full stop. He's not going to figure it out on his first time here, is he? Hey, he, listen, he might come second. He's really good. He is really good. And, and pe- but no one is, a, everyone seems to be afraid of, and a part of it is the pricing as well, where he is priced. But everyone's notion right now is that Wyndham Clark will not be able to figure this out. It is a lock that Oberg figures it out, where it's probably just the opposite. Or maybe they both figure it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is there a Scotty? The guys that come one, two at all the recent tournaments, Scotty and Wyndham, 69, 75 remaining. That's very doable with Taylor Moore or Denny. So if you go Moore, you're still at 7,100. Who was the other 6K guy that you liked up top there? Oh, Sergio, you said? Serge, yeah. 
this is actually interesting. And then you have 7350. So it was Scheffler and Clark as the start? Ooh, I like this build, Pat. You might like this one. All right, Scheffler, Clark. Scheffler, Clark, Sergio Moore at the bottom. Ooh. Yeah. And it gets you one chalky dude in Thigala, but you land on English. So who cares? Okay. Like when you have English, Garcia, Moore, I guess Scotty and Clark, for the jokes we made earlier of Scotty and Xander, they're just that you've got first and second. You literally can put first and second of the recent tournaments like the API and the players into your lineup and no one's playing Wyndham. So that balances the Scotty love and it's two studs skipping a 10K, 9K and 8K range. You're skipping three ranges in this roster construction. Then you land on Thigala. Fine. We like him. The upside's there. He's maybe the riskiest one. that You're the guy that you have the most risk on because English and Garcia are fine. Just old heads, old heads for this. Find their way around. Can find their way to a top 15, top 10. And then more. We already said more rhymes with score. He's going to do his job down below and get us the job done there. So um, not the worst projection. Super low ownership and very unique roster construction. Skipping eights, nines. Uh, completely. You do have the one 10K guy, I guess, in Clark, but eights and nines missing completely. All right. So I'm going to manipulate this around okay, and, and make this a bit more chalky or a bit less chalky. Sure. Just to really get off the board here. So we got Thigala out. Yep. Thigala is now Patrick Reed. So you got Reed at 74. Now you have an extra 300 to play around, which means you can turn English into like the Henley or Minwoo, or you can turn Sergio into Siwoo. Or Taylor Moore up 300 bucks, which I don't really think accomplishes that much unless you love Eric Cole or Keegan or Ryan Fox. Or People s- like Benny Ann or something probably. Sure. Yeah, but I do like your play of just taking your stand on your guy down low versus trying to play six or seven of them and sneak one yeah. in here, one in there, one just commit. It's, and it's, if it's, he comes through, it's like, did I get my other parlays right of my four combo up top with the one other dude? Like, you're just trying to look at that. Yeah, I, I'm going to cap a lot. Like, I'm going to build different sets of lineups because I don't want to have 70% exposure to Taylor Moore. Mm-hmm. So I'll build a set of lineups with Taylor Moore and then take him out of the pool and then rerun those lineups just so I don't get too much. But it's going to be a lot of more, a lot of Sergio, and a lot of Thorbjorn. That's just the way that I'm going to roll this week. And if those guys burn me, they burn me. How much is Olsen? 65? 65, yeah. Uh, this is another interesting one, actually, I just landed on. So take Sergio down to Olison and then take English up to Hatton? Something like that. You liked Hatton, right? Yeah. And then you end up, who was 74 or 73? 74 and 73. You got Patrick Reed, uh, or you was, can make it Henley. Or you no, it was Reed. It. I, I like the Reed one. So, uh, Scheffler, Clark, Reed, Hatton, Olison, Moore? Yeah. It, it's realistically, it's you need, if Moore does the job you're expecting him to, putting him in, in more than enough lineups here, he, it almost becomes in this version where Olison becomes your flyer s- sixth guy. man, even though it's not by price point, he's not, you're very comfortable with Taylor Moore. So it's like Clark, Scheffler, Hatton, Reed. Yeah, you're definitely fine with that. And that could be up at the top 10 with the winner. Moore has already been your guy. So maybe he's the top 20 that still fits it out. And then you just need Olison to be your scorer. And, and then you're good. And then you can build the safe ver- the safer version that doesn't have Hatton and Reed in it. You just turn Hatton and Reed into Thigala and Henley. And you still have a hundred bucks left. Yeah. Yep. So that's another way that you could play that potential lineup. You want to do a head to head draft now, now that you're winning, you're the big winner here. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to say though, we, there's one guy we didn't talk about very much. There's a bunch of guys. We talked about Rangers and stuff like that, but funny, we did all those lineups and even got to the Brookses and the Wyndham Clarks of the worlds and both Rom and Rory pretty much never got touched. Yeah. And what's not in, like what's known the ROM thing, you mentioned it off the top, likely to get squeezed. What's interesting, Rory, not even a mention. So what are people actually doing with 10-8 Rory this week? Okay, so let, let, let's do that then before we do the head-to-head. Let's build a ROM Rory lineup. A double double down, Double yeah. down. We'll double down there because that's no different than what, Scotty Xander? I think it's exactly the same. Like that's a legitimate 2v2. Yeah, there's going to be lots of these 2v2s that you feel pretty good about. But I this guess. feels like, like we said... It'd be we didn't bring up Spieth all that much either, and like no real mention of Cantlay. Like Cantlay's not getting owned. I'm not playing. I either. don't see how people get to um, Cantlay, Hovland, very much Rom, Rory. I guess we're just not we're the ones not talking about him. A lot of people will. Yeah, be no, though. I agree. So I get that. But like same with Spieth. I think we're not talking about him, but a lot of people will. But yeah, like this, you can go Rom, Rory, put your more Garcia in, and get Thigala Siwu, and. 
that's some of your dudes all in one line. And, and look, I, I don't think it matters like how quote unquote chalky that this, oh, I put in more cow for some reason instead of more. Probably don't want to do that. Not leaving me with a ton of money here. So Sergio, I keep putting Seg in instead of Surge in. Yeah, so 74. What can you do? You could do Thigala Siwu, you said? Thigala Siwu. You can do Fleetwood Batia. You can do like a couple different combos here, whatever you Yeah, you whatever, whatever you like the best. But I don't think it, the chalk at the bottom matters. Not that Moore and Sergio are going to be super chalky, but they're just based on the way that we've been constructing lineups on this show, it would seem that way. It's not actually that way. Right. That this is realistically like if people were to say, hey, I'm going to commit to Rom and Rory, Moore is probably Denny in most lineups mm -hmm. would be my guess. And then you can save the extra money with Sergio and then Harris English gets a boost or whoever it might be. Whoever they land on there. Yeah, but yeah. I just think having Rom and Rory will be, I don't want to say totally unique, but it's pretty close. And I actually like the version of Rom and Brooks better or Rom and Wyndham Clark or even Rom and Xander. Just ROM in general. But the thing is, I don't love ROM this week. Like, I don't want to commit to playing so many ROM lineups because I'm just, you know, I'm wishy washy on them. I want to do one more lineup with you. I meant to ask you earlier if we, if we have time. Do we get, okay, let's we, do. We, we, got, um, we got unlimited time here, really. So, the one we always talk about, I think people like this one. We always talk about, okay, who is the, like, I'll use Justin Thomas, for example, to start it, the underpriced potential talent. That you could, you know, we talk about all the time, like you're just betting on their talent. Yeah, who's, who's going to be more money next year? Yeah, like who's just in a funk right now that it drops them down the board some, or has like a talent waiting to break break out that will be more at the tournament next so, year. So playing. Thomas Hovland and Cantlay, Morikawa. Can we fit all those guys? <laughs> no, yeah. we, 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 we can, may. but just let's get rid of one. Get rid of one of Hovland or Cantlay. Cantlay for this one. Let's get rid of Cantlay. So we'll go Hovland, Thomas, Morikawa. Okay. At 78. The one thing I did notice from all of these builds that you're absolutely right. Although it's showing ownership on Finau and Cam Young, it's just not going to happen. I, I don't see it. Yeah, it just it's too hard to get that extra three to 500 bucks to get to the mid eights because it'll be such a want to get up to Hideki or you can save the money to get down to Lowry or Fitz or that mm -hmm. very comfortable 7K range. Yeah. And then to get yourself back up to improve your first player in from Rom to Scotty or Rory to Rom, whatever it might be, that we're just not seeing any builds that land in that particular area. Mm -hmm. Does Fitz go into this lineup? Like, is Fitz getting another major this year at some point? Yeah, I mean, he's a, major, he's a major champion, so you throw Lowry into it as well, really. And then you got 75, and Fleetwood is the ultimate king of this. So there's your lineup. That's pretty nice. Like, that's, a, that's the... I mean, this is a balanced lineup that you could play that no you, one else You know is what playing. is crazy about this? Is the Tommy trajectory change we talked about, old Tommy trajectory. If he does get it, he's not going to be 7,500. Corey Connors is just forever going to be 6,500 to 7,500 at the Masters. It just feels that way. Not, not making fun of my Canadian guy, but just to say it, Lowry, you mentioned it could definitely be more. Morikawa, 84. He's basically the average price, two-time major winner. Just needs to get support. Like, it, this lineup makes sense. And who's going to own this? Nine, eight, 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 seven, seven. It almost rounds out everything we talked about on the show of capping your sixes at twos, pushing in more eight guys that people can't get to, playing talented guys at, un at low ownership just because everyone says they're done and they suck now, and then you remember they're really good when the whole world's tuning in and finds them on the Master Sunday leading their way up the board. So yeah, de definitely fun to do builds like that. And really, would this leaderboard surprise you? No. It's Hovland, Morikawa, Justin Thomas, Fitzpatrick, Shane Lowry, and Tommy Fleetwood. That's... That's the top of the Masters leaderboard that you could easily see. And there is no, uh, if only Taylor Moore scores a few extra eagles in there and gets us going there, or maybe it's Eckroat Week or whoever. I liked Olison's ball striking. We're the same. We like all that shit. <laughs> Other people are going to see this, but this is not the common one, like the one that we built earlier that started with Xander and built its way down. Head-to-head -head draft. You won last week. Does that mean I get first pick now? Will you just give me this lineup, or you, want, you might want Lowry? You want that lineup? Would you would you play me against it? If yeah, I'll I let play you take you any six against yeah, it. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll play my six against that lineup. All right. If, if you want that one, I I like that. And then it's kind of interesting because you'll give your perspective of breaking down how you would go. It you can't pick any of my guys, which is fine. You probably don't love any of them anyway. And I'm kind of taking that talent upside play here. But I'm curious to see how it shakes out and what your strategy would be against that. I mean, I would play. You get Scotty right out of the gate. Yeah, I mean, I, you I want up top. Yeah, I got the balance build. Scotty Henley, Siwoo. The Gala, Connors. It's funny, it lands you in this range. And you cannot use Morikawa. I can't use Morikawa. So how do I... Who do you have here right now? You I got Scheffler, Henley. 
I can see it. It's, yeah, it's, Sheff, it's Scheffler and all the 7K guys. I think you got to bust your Taylor Moore in there for your C. Woo. It's one guy versus the other. It's, it's mayo on mayo violence, but that might be the way to get something you actually want. I mean, I told you I love Cam Young, so I'm going to use Cam Young. All right, how much is he? He's 85. He's 85. That leaves me 74 with Patrick Reed. Ooh, you like Reed. I do like Reed, but... Damn, that, this lineup you have right here, if you go with this one, Scotty, Cam Young, Thigala, Reed, Henley, Siwoo. Can't fit Hideki in, no matter what I do. Batia? Now let's go with Reed. I like I, Reed. I do, I do like that lineup. And we're actually projected for the first time within like two points. No, mine's not. It's like the very first time, despite me winning five of yeah. eight weeks, that I'm not down 30 points in the projection. I did hide the fact to say that yours is the one that's up to in this spot. But first time, I think that's the first time I have a better. It's because I have Scotty. It's just like when I do every underdog draft for major season. If you get the first pick, you inherently win all the projections because you have Scheffler. Yeah. I need some chalk to bust up for your lineup, and I need some dudes that are talented but have not been talented to show up. But I, I kind of like that exercise just to see where you would go knowing you can't play those six after we talk through everything on the show and all those different angles and ways to attack, knowing what you're going up against. I think the right play was just play the better plays, like play the guys Play the know. best plays. Play the best plays, lineups, yep, and, and then go that way. But – um, you know, with everything considered, you ended up on Scotty with four 7K guys. Just shows what we said off the top that everyone sort of knows. That's the build this week. Yeah, and, and I got, I was able to squeeze in Cam Young. Yeah. So keep in mind, my final strategy tip then, I guess would just be that, is you don't, I'm not saying go in your optimizer and set rules to say, it's up to you how aggressive you want to get and just say max two 7K guys. Obviously, you know that's going to get you different. Most people will have at least three, if not four, in some cases five. But there's 7K guys you can pivot to. There's dudes we didn't even mention here. Jason Day, Brian Harmon, Sung J M. We we talked a little bit about, but like Tom Kim, Ricky Fowler, Min Woo. There's tons of guys you can just get different with. Who who would be your one to get different with of the names you just mentioned? Because the answer for me is Min Woo. Um, Min I mean, Woo. I mean, I'm doing it with Reed because I like Reed, but I think the Min Woo after Reed would be my guy of Tom Kim and Sung J. And Hatton was the other one that I'm going to use. Probably one guy we didn't mention was uh, Jason Day. Pass. Min Woo. Those are the guys that I'm, I'm just telling you who I like. Yeah. That'd be the guys that I would fit in there and go off them. I like your Harris English one, which we did talk about him, but I really don't think he's getting steamed up or anything at that range. I think people would go to like the Sergio's and below or the Siwoo's and above. So I, I think that's one call there also. But yeah, the, um, Justin Rose, we talked about a little bit. First round leader last year. Yeah, it feels like he's always could be in the mix. He knows the place. What's the difference between him and Sergio, though, people say, and you just go down and get Sergio for, for less. Cheaper, literally beat his ass last time they played in head's head going down to the wire, so who knows? There is one guy in here whose name did not come up the entire show, and someone had mentioned him on my stream last night, is Chris Kirk. Oh, I thought you were going to say Jager bombs. No, I'd rather have Chris Kirk here. He's driving the ball exceptionally well. The irons have just gone in the tank. But he won at Kapalua. Man, there's been a lot of... I, I know it's the Tournament of Champions, so obviously the best players play in that tournament. Then they come to Augusta. Like, you have to look at field strength at the same time, too. But he just beat all the, like, all of the top players on the PGA Tour at a course where you know, Cam Smith has won, and Tiger has won, and Patrick Reed has won, and Spieth has won. Just guys... I, I Rom like has won. Yeah. Like, guys who have won the Masters have won at Kapalua as well. We don't think of Chris Kirk in those terms because he's not those guys, but he's also 6,900. And we're bucks. also not looking for him to put on a jacket here. No, that's he needs to come like you're 13th. Making. You're talking about the guy at 6,900 that's going to score and a lot of those lineups that you talked about earlier where your guy was Taylor Moore, if you only just add Kirk and a few others to the mix, you're not going to be overloaded down there, but there's plenty of builds we did today where you could have found the 500 bucks pretty easily and went from Hideki down to Cam Young, for example. The, all those Hideki Moore lineups can be Kirk Cam Young. Yeah, or any th time that we had Sergio in a lineup or Harris English in a lineup, you could take Harris English down $100 to Kirk or Sergio up $100. Right. If you're worried that, listen, I'm not worried that they're going to be too popular. I'm just worried that I might have too much of those guys. Sure. So if I'm looking to chop it up a little bit, Chris Kirk would be the guy I would go to. Yeah, there's lots and lots of different ways. That's why I brought that up at the end. I think that's a good call. All right, that will do it. Masters, millionaire maker preview. I'm excited for this week. I'm going yeah. to Vegas, I'll be there. That's going to be awesome. Doing a live show. 8 p.m. Eastern time from Vegas. Me and Jeff are going to be doing that. Joey Doney is joining us this weekend, so he might be on that show as well. I'm not sure exactly when he gets in, so come join us at the Circa on Saturday if you're around to watch the Masters and or UFC 300. 
be there all day. It's going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be a time. And I'll have the best bet show coming out tomorrow. But again, if you want to get in that draw for the thousand bucks, code mayo, underdogfantasy.com. You get the free squares and you get the $100 deposit match. And in the draw, the thousand dollar draw. Uh, and rate and review and subscribe to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Pat Mayo Experience. Always helpful. They tell the Ship It Nation people to do it too. And where they can get Ship It Nation. Yeah, shipitnation.com. Use that code Mayo. It does get you 10% off. Get in on the action now. But I will say just a couple quick things. One for the tidbit side of things. Giving away $500 Ooh. this week. So $100 for every 100 reposts. And I'm going to pick them as they go. So the quicker you repost it and get it out there to the masses, the better. So do that. Going to give away up to $500 for the first 500 reposts. If we can get there. I think the last major last year was like 396 or something. So try and get that to 500 reposts. And then no real sell on shippingnation.com. You, you know what it is. You can go to the site, check it out, use code mail. But I will say, I think a lot of people that watch the show, one thing I was going to bring up today is just like the, the free stuff is awesome. That's why we do it. That's why we keep the shows free and you catch on to a lot of different things. But I think people do it a little in reverse, Pat. And that's why, you know, just for the quick two second promotion on a master show is the whole thing is a lot of the stuff we talked about, these ranges and roster constructions and wave stacking and all these things, people are just catching little bits of that and they don't really fully know what we're exactly talking about in some cases if they're just starting out or trying to win a million bucks or whatever it might be. The free picks are awesome, but I think you should go join a community where the focus is on actually winning the tournaments that we're playing and that's what we have success doing. That's what we're focused on. You'll catch on and get a lot more of this stuff have a community of like-minded individuals that are trying to get better that have made mistakes along the way. And talk it through with them at the yeah. same time. That's the key, man. That's what I say all the time. And it's not like it's a $1,000 sell, like Tam was trying to sell me on this big package. You can go sign up with code Mayo and it's like a dollar a day almost <laughs> for your first month to try it out. You're going to get all the showdown content, all the master stuff for this week, but then you're going to get the heritage, the other three events leading up to the PGA Championship. And if you liked what you got, then make your call for the PGA Championship. But that's the, the real sales pitch is if you're working on your game, you want to try and win these tournaments, go to a place that's not just picks and plays, focuses on process and actually attacking the field that we're playing against and how we can level up against them. That's what our goal always is going to be. At Toe Tagon Tambo on X, formerly known, as Twitter, he's going to have the tidbits, so go repost those because he's doing a cash giveaway. I'm doing a cash giveaway. You're just making money by watching the show, so don't lose it all back this week. But if you do, hey, maybe you've won some of these draws and you break even for the week. FantasyNational.com slash Mayo, underdog code Mayo. Please go sign up now and support the show. Smash the like while you're here and share us around all the content that you see from us on social this week. We're trying to get as many eyeballs on the product as possible, and we can do it with your help. All right, I'm Pat Mayo. I'll see you next time. Experience! Experience!